Don't forget to subscribe. You said you subscribe. There's nothing in it for you. It's only for me. But just do it. Subscribe. You hit uh, one of those buttons down there. Subscribe, subscribe. Tell people. They'll do it too. We can all subscribe. Let's have a subscribe party. It's it's subscrip 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 I am Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. Oh, here we go. This is going to be a four-card oracle. And then with the um, diet cross for each of the four cards after that. So get your questions ready. Take a deep breath. Calm yourself. Go get a cup of water or a soda or a cup of tea. Something to calm yourself. And let's get ready. So this is the Wild Unknown Tarot by Kim Kranz. And these cards are really nice cards. She's put some very thoughtful messages in this uh, really a nice uh, guide box or guidebook. Uh, or <laughs> packaging that she's included. The guidebook is a really cool quality. The cards are co completely fully depicted here, not in color, but um, you know, there's not much color in the cards anyway. And there's some very thoughtful ideas as to the divination of the cards. So uh, Kim Cran did a beautiful job with this. Then it's got a, a box within a box. I, I like to call the inner sanctum. Another nice message inside this box and the cards well, there's a little something lacking in the cards, and I'll tell you what it is, is that the uh, quality of them isn't, doesn't make them the easiest cards to use. Um, the cards are thin. Um, they don't uh, spread out very well, but the meaning in the cards is unbelievable, and you'll see uh, right here as I put them out for you. All this detail that you see, this is hand-drawn. Every single, all of these lines, all of this repetitiveness that you see in here is, um, is Kim Cran's work uh her and so it really makes you feel like some a lot of thought a lot of intention went into each and every drawing that you have here and so and like i always say i spread these cards out in the beginning here so that you can kind of get a look at a full deck of cards if you don't collect cards or if you don't see lots of variety of cards all the time and i'm kind of a crazy person that buys a lot of cards um sadly um but um they make for a very nice um experience when you're doing divination with these cards kim crayons the wild and untarot okay so this will be the four card oracle so these are the wild um the unknown tarot cards uh but uh, we're going to do the oracle part also with wild unknown but these are animal spirit cards now when i got these so they're oracle cards but when i got these uh, i didn't realize they were knockoffs so they came without the really uh correct divinations for all the characters uh, that you see in here so it's gonna go with my gut what else do I got but they're great cards are beautiful and uh, they're pretty self-explanatory and they still what's amazing about these is have I said it before yeah I did is that all of this this detail that you see in here is free hand drawn you know and like the back of these cards look at the detail in that so so much attention goes into this when the artist makes them you know there's there's concentrating so much on every detail that, and then uh when she's uh, creating them with the intent that they're oracle cards or tarot cards as is the case with the, these over here uh then you know that you've got some beautiful intention in these cards and hopefully you know we can somehow rest that into a, a universal reading and where we get in touch with everyone's feelings and uh, that's all sounds very new age but uh, you know what it really uh it's something that's not a bad way to live your life, I think. So, okay, what are going to be the four cards for you? So take a deep breath. Let it fully out. Maybe turn the video off for a minute and take a, a moment to kind of meditate and to think about what's important to you. If you have uh, some someone that you pray to or someone that you look for guidance from or some uh, ritual for that along those lines, you know, now's the time to do that. And then get your questions or question uh, focused in your mind. We're going to take four cards. 
for the oracles. I like these. They're a little bit smaller than the regular cards, and they feel uh, special uh, when you're dealing with them. Let's put these away in the box right now. As a matter of fact, take care of your toys, Mom always said. Put them back where they come from, or you can leave them strewn around the house like today's kids do. All right, so we're going to have these cards here for you to choose from. So just take a minute and think. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. These really won't be yes or no cards. These will be uh, the spirit of um, uh, that brings us some guidance uh, for the oracle for the divinations we're going to do in a minute. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay. So now we'll reveal them and see what we've got. So the whale. You know what? I wish I had my. Um, gosh, I've got another uh, elemental guide that I'm going to take a minute. Walk over here and get uh, while you're there thinking I'm sitting down. I'm walking around the room looking for my cheat sheets because I want to think about the uh, the elements and I want to think about also the numerology that's involved here. And those are not my strong suits, but I don't mind uh, cheating. <laughs> so this is whale, and you know this is an energy that is so amazing to me. And again, I hope I can just draw your attention to the detail. Just all the detail, all the intent for me. It's not just detail, it's intention. It's loving, thoughtful intention that went into constructing this uh, image. So the whale is, uh, you would think of him as the king of the sea almost, but they're such a docile, gentle uh, animal. I don't know that, that um, they attack. I think they just exist. And, um, and so this, of course, is the element of water. And uh, if this is the card that you chose, I think you can count on a very... Uh, consider what this means in your life today is for a big, quiet, uh, reassuring, calming, um, nurturing, because whales are amazing nurturers, uh, a nurturing presence for, for this card. Okay. If you chose number two, then we have the peacock. And again, you know, again, look at the intention that's just uh, throughout this card. And if this uh, was your card, then we're looking at earth here. We're talking about an earth. Uh, is this an earth energy? No, I'm sorry. This is an air energy right here. So this is an air energy. And the peacock is very proud and very um, aggressive, as a matter of fact, uh, very territorial and um, and showy. So think of those elements when you're trying to apply this card to whatever the issue is that you have. They're very obvious, the answers to these cards. If you chose number three, then we have the camel. And, you know, the camel, again, uh, now this is finally the uh, fire uh, energy, the sky energy, uh, air, and um, passion, and uh, a lot of drive. So if you, when you think of the camel, camel, again, you want to think of a very sturdy beast. Uh, it's uh, um, fully self-contained. It can carry itself for a long distance and can be depended on. So when I think of camel, that's what I think of. And you want to try to uh, decide in your mind what defines camel for you and then see if those elements somehow can be applied to the issue that you're assigned uh, to this card. Number three. If you chose number four, then we want to look at the cobra. Man, look at this. And the, the intention that went into this card is more than obvious. And so also this is a fire energy passion. And uh, this uh, cobra is a, a surviving machine. This animal... Uh, is is um, we think of it as being commanding and being in charge and uh, defending uh, its uh, area and uh, and defending its being even. So if cobra is the if number four is the card you chose, see if you can't get that cobra uh, energy, whatever it means to you, and see if you can overlay that on the issue that you had for those cards. So it was whale, very calming, peacock, showy and territorial, camel surviving and enduring and cobra um very um striking okay very uh, much in charge of its um well-being so let's take those cards i want to put them somewhere that's not going to be too obtrusive let's get this out of the picture and we'll see if we can just put these cards way over here i always try it like that and it never quite works but uh, we'll do it again this time and uh, let's turn them over to hide them though because uh, we only want the one that's uh, relevant uh, uh, working with, with us right now. So that's whale energy. Go back to the deck. And uh, again, beautiful cards. Kim Kranz, what an amazing artist. If only uh, I had that. 
So this um, whale energy, uh, let's see what this means for you as the guiding principle for this uh, cross that we're going to bring out right now. The whale uh, energy. Very calm, nurturing mother whale. Okay, let's see if we can do a little bit of spread on these cards. And then we'll see if we can get six out of here that are going to be meaningful for us. It's one. Okay, these want to come, so I'm just going to take them. Two, three, four. I'm going to say something's down here that wants to be uh, pulled out. Five, but let's go back over here and get the last one, number six. So there we go. Six cards, and we're going to see what is the signifier card for this whale energy. Okay? The signifier card for you in this issue is the devil. Look at that. It's so amazing. So the devil, uh, this is number 15 of the Major Arcana. So we're pretty much along our journey. We're getting towards a point where we can see the end of this cycle ahead. And we're being tempted by this devil. Look at this amazing goat with his little fiery hooves here. Uh, almost suspended in the darkness. And the devil is lesser intention. You know, being headstrong. Uh, not um, wavering from uh, your point of view. Okay? So... Maybe, if that's a signifier, the whale is the perfect uh, foil uh, to that kind of energy. Uh, the challenge to the devil, then, is the moon. Secrets being revealed. Okay, the moon is all about letting out those parts of you that, um, that are so protected. Okay, and uh, this devil energy, sometimes we have to realize that it's going to try to use those issues uh, against us. But... Um, it's always a good idea to let the pressure off and then try to uh, find some serene uh, way to um, overcome this devilish uh, intention. The uh, base of this reading then is the Empress. So this is telling us that we are strong and that we have what it takes. We can command the scenery. Uh, we can um, uh, make our presence known just by displaying um, our value. So the Empress card here. I'm going to let it start to cover up that devil card, as a matter of fact. In the past of this reading, we had, ah, so this is uh, unfortunate. This is the nine of swords. You got them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then nine right here. Sword, this is nightmares, and this is a nightmarish card. I mean, just look at that. Everything that you wouldn't want to stick your hand in a bowl if it were pitch black and you didn't know what you were sticking your hand in, this is what you would imagine it might be, perhaps. So, Again, uh, when we have these, these difficult uh, energies, let's try to uh, let the uh, serene calm of the whale take us through that. In the sky of this reading is uh, the Ace of Swords. So this is wonderful because now it says this is a plan. This is a great big bursting plan of action. And that's what we need to have. We need to have a plan to overcome this, uh, this poor uh, energy that we have here. So... That's what we've got there. Now, the likely outcome of the first part of this issue is then look at that. The Two of Cups, which is partnerships, uh, loving partnerships perhaps, certainly pleasant uh, partnerships. And so that's uh, what uh, is the likely outcome of this difficult situation. Oh, I want to do a full cross, but I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. So just know that uh, with the right uh, partnership, uh, this uh, can uh, pass, whatever the issue is. I hope that was okay. I mean, just doing my best, guys. So that's whale energy. So now we're going to take number two and turn that over, and we've got peacock. So peacock is a very showy, very much in your face, uh, very territorial sort of an energy, and uh, that's what's going to um, kind of overlook. I don't know how many cards I've put in there so far. Overlook uh, this uh, divination that we're about to come up with. Uh, the peacock. The peacock is our driving force for uh, these situations that are about to be revealed to us. Let's try to do a nice spread. Um, okay, that's a little more interesting, perhaps. We're going to take six cards out of there. This is going to be one. Okay, two. Let's do this one, three. Over here we have four, five, and then six. Okay, so sit there. Peacock is our guiding light. 
And I don't know if you've ever heard a peacock. They're very loud and, and they're very uh, kind of obnoxious even. And uh, like I said, territorial and proud when they display those feathers out. The signifier card for this event is the Five of Pentacles. And the Five of Pentacles is kind of being left out in the cold. You know, this poor rose, if it had been left out in the cold, then it's, it's starting to wilt, it's starting to die, and all of its life's uh, juices have drained out or have frozen up. So this Five of Pentacles uh, right here is a signifier feeling, you know, left out in the cold. Um, I can't imagine a peacock feeling left out in the cold. And if it did, I think it would just immediately, uh, you know, throw out its feathers and take control of the situation. So the signifier card is feeling uh, left out in the cold. The challenge to that is a wheel of fortune. So that's fantastic. The wheel of fortune for me is always turning in a positive direction. Okay. It, true. It can't land on some unfortunate situation, but if you're feeling out in the cold, you need to have faith that the wheel is turning and the cycle is continuing and this too will pass. And why not um, help it along with a little flourish? Uh, the base of this reading then is the Son of Pentacles. So uh, the Son of Pentacles would be equal to, let's see, the Knight of Pentacles. It would be the princess in this deck, then the, or the daughter, uh, the son, the uh, mother, and I guess the father. So this would be the knight. This deer, although it's very uh, beautiful looking, and at first glance you think, isn't that a docile, lovely uh, animal? But it's got protection. It's got some sturdy to it. It's going to defend itself, and the, it's going to defend its worth. Because for, for no reason will this deer just stop and say, okay, eat me. No, this deer, this son of pentacles, is going to fight for its worth. And that's what we have to do. We have to realize our worth, just like the peacock does, and fight for it. The past of this reading uh, is the Ace of Wands. Again, I love it when the cards repeat because it just shows me that they're playing the game. Okay, the Ace of Wands, a great big offer of action. And we kind of came into this with that. And... Um, and that's certainly, if you've ever seen a peacock uh, in a, in, in not only in the wild, but I've, I've never seen one in the wild actually, but in a normal habitat, they are very much in, in charge of their area. The uh, sky in this reading is a daughter of swords. So the daughter of swords is like the page of swords. So she's bringing a message to the court for consideration, and it has to do with truth and justice. And she's very wise, and she's bringing this in, and we're going to have to consider it. So... And that's the best we can hope for. And then the likely outcome of all of this is temperance. Love temperance. And what a beautiful card this is. It's the perfect bookend to this peacock, to tell you the truth. As colorful as this is, you can almost see this as the tail of that peacock. So temperance is just telling us, let's balance this out. Let's get it right. So we're taking, uh, we, we, we felt left out in the cold. The life is going on. And the next thing that happens could be great. Um, we know that we um, are, are going to fight for our value. We're getting a great big offer of a plan. The uh, Daughter of Swords is saying, let's involve some truth and justice in there. And Temperance is going to help us weigh this thing all out with the guidance of the Peacock Energy. <laughs> peacock Energy, I should say. So that's two of them. The, the third card here is the Camel. I love the camel. I wouldn't mind it being associated with a camel. I mean, they're not particularly bright, I understand, but they are, if, if I had to choose uh, an animal to take with me, I wouldn't uh, uh, put my nose up at the camel. I think it'd be very useful uh, if I was in a situation when I needed a, a strong uh, beast or a dependable um, animal on my side. So the camel energy is very sure-footed and determined also. Very stubborn, as a matter of fact. So these cards don't spread well, but that's fine. They have amazing messages. So we're going to take six. This is one, two, three, four, five, and six. Six of those cards right out of there. And see what is the signifier going to be for this part, this divination, with the camel energy uh, guiding us. Um, the three kings. Uh, may have traveled on camels, uh, some say. Anyway, so the second part of this is the lover. So this is unions, finding the partnership that's going to really uh, brighten up this whole uh, issue. Uh, the two uh, and the major arcana, arcana lovers. Now it's uh, the number six uh, in the major arcana. So we're, you know, a good part on, on our journey. But the lovers is a definite, uh, dedicated uh, partnership that you can count on. The challenge to it is strength. 
And of course it is. You know, anytime you've got two uh, personalities, you're going to have some sort of uh, a conflict. But look, let's let's make sure that we come at it with something beautiful. Look at this rose and looking for some balance. And um, and we know that we can uh, make this journey. The base of this reading then is the eight of wands. The eight of wands, I mean, look at this. Wands are fire, action, power, motion, planning, and things happening. And this has got a spark. A light is coming to these wands. So the base of this is uh, the eight of uh, wands, which is typically, you know, issue, something you have to deal with. But thank goodness we have things that we have to deal with. The past of this reading then is the... Um, Eight of Cups. And so the Eight of Cups speaks to loss or having to leave something behind that uh, was of value to you. And in this case, everything that we're having to leave behind looks like it's completely destroyed, like it's unusable. Of course, because of the darkness falling over the picture, could it be that some of these cups aren't necessarily empty? Doesn't matter. It, we've, got to keep, we've got to keep going on this journey and not dwell on the loss that we may have and that we have the strength to do it. Okay, the uh, sky of this reading then is the world card. Love that because this is the, the end of the cycle. We've completed the journey. We've had success. And that's what we want to aim for. We want to end for getting this thing done in the best way possible so that we can start something new uh, next. So, and this camel uh, can be very stubborn about getting his way. The likely outcome of the whole thing is the Hierophant, which are rules, government, structure, the, the way it should be done. This crow is so smart. He's going to take this key and he's going to figure out how to use it. And you can do the same with the uh, perseverance and the sure-footedness that this camel is giving us to ride over the whole uh, issue. Okay. Now, the fourth card, if that's what you chose, is that cobra, man. You know, that seems like... A, um, a sticky situation to be in, you know. You think of the cobra and you think, what is, of these animals is the one I would least want to be around? Probably the cobra. If I had to choose one of them to defend me and it was loyal to me, what would I want? I probably would want the cobra. That's what I would say. So this cobra can be very useful when it's tempered or when uh, we uh, understand uh, how that cobra energy works. We'll try this spread out again. It's just not working very well today, but listen, as long as we get the cards. Uh, we're going to take six, so this is one, this is two, three, four, five. And go back over here for number six. We're done with these cards now. They've served us well, and we're going to see what is the signifier for this reading with the guiding spirit of the cobra to take us through it. It's the two of wands. So the two of wands is plans, getting it started. Let's make some plans. Let's not look too far in the future, but let's get some action behind us and, and see uh, if we can't get this thing uh, going. The challenge to this, then look at that. So we have another snake. We have the son of swords. The son of swords is like the knight of, of, of the suit. So he's going to fight uh, uh, wands. I'm sorry to say wands is what I meant. He's going to uh, <coughs> fight to get his plan across. He's carrying it proudly and uh, has wrapped himself around it. And what a perfect compliment to this Cobra. I mean, I couldn't have planned this better, actually. The base of this reading is the Seven of Pentacles. And the Seven of Pentacles is wondering, now, have I done enough? I have the worth. I know that I can do this, but I want to know, is there something more I should be doing? Uh, should I line these up in some other way? How can I cultivate this situation? To, to come out to my best interest. And in the past of this reading is the Four of Cups. <clears throat> the Four of Cups typically is being offered something you don't quite want. And I think if I had a rat on top of my cup, no, that's not something I would want. But guess what? This cobra eats rats all day long. And we've got a snake on our side fighting to get this done. So I think uh, this is a perfect uh, indicator that we've got the strength that we need to follow through on these plans with plenty of worth. <clears throat> the, um, look at that. Again, the cards repeating themselves. They're in the game with us. Number six of the Major Arcana. These are the lovers, and you want to shoot for that. You want to shoot for whomever or whatever you can pair with uh, and, and depend on to uh, fly through this uh, energy. The um, likely outcome of all of this, then, is the Seven of Cups, and it's um, you can't say illusion or delusion, or you can say lots of choices, lots of things to choose from. So I think what we're saying here is that we, let's make a plan, 
It doesn't have to be a forever plan, but something to get us going. We got the strength to do it. We have the value. We can clear up the issue with these, um, this passion, these uh, obsessions, perhaps these emotions, because this Cobra will get rid of that rat for us. And, uh, these, uh, we can pair up with the lovers and then come out to make a decision about what it is that we have to go forward with. Cobra is not going to let you down. So that was the reading today for this uh, four card Oracle you pick with dyadic cross divination. And I hope it was something, you know, it, brought, it gave something to you. If it didn't, maybe you can look at it a little bit later, or at least hopefully you were entertained for a few minutes or come back to another day. Maybe it applies to someone else that you're uh, thinking of. I'm Mark, my journey through tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by, we'll do it again. Ciao for now.